Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Solo Laura estate sale time. It's been a while. I'm excited though. I am at an estate sale before I start work. This one's an early one. Um, it's close to where I live. So I think I'm gonna be able to sneak in to this estate sale and then go back to work relatively quickly, which is exciting. Always love a good pre-work Friday estate sale. Um, this house looks like there's some older stuff. Looks like there's a whole basement full of holiday. Not sure how old or how vintage the stuff is, but since it's so close, I can't resist. It's Friday, happy Friday guys. And um, yeah, so I'm here without Janine, but we're gonna show her hopefully a haul after this if we get anything good. If you guys are new to the channel, I'm usually here with Janine, my wife, but today I'm here solo. Um, and we go thrifting, we go to estate sales, we go to garage sales, we do the whole kid and caboodle all in search for vintage treasures. So if that's your thing, consider uh, subscribing. We also are just like two crazy girls. We have a fun time, we make it fun. Um, at least we, we try to, and we don't take ourselves too seriously. So um, I'm gonna head in and uh, then show you guys hopefully what I got. Guys, this was like a chaotic estate sale to start because like at first they were like, go in. It's like 10 minutes before it starts. Go in, you can look at the basement only. So I went in, I put a bunch of stuff back in my bag and then they're like, wait, it hasn't started yet, go out. So I'm here waiting for a few extra minutes until the sale actually started to go back in and look at what I was already looking at. But everybody else had gone like to the front of the house to check out the uh, upstairs. But I was still interested in the holiday, of course. So I made my way in to actually look at everything. Um, and there was quite a lot of boxes of holiday. As you can see, there was quite a good amount to look through. So I started off looking at this box. I noticed that there was some Halloween stuff and Janine and I collect vintage Halloween, but we like stuff all the way from like the 1940s all through to the 2000s, like the early 2000s. In this box, I found two haunted houses. These sort of ceramic type haunted houses were really popular in the early 90s. Um, and we have quite a few in the collection. They're really fun and quite nostalgic. If you're new to our estate sale videos, Janine and I like to go to estate sales that are called digger sales, where you quite literally dig through the contents of the home. Not many things are priced, maybe a thing here or there, but in this case, all the holiday was just out in the basement in its original boxes. And you know, you come in and you dig through all the contents and you make a big pile and the company gives you an offer. And usually the bigger the pile, the better your um, price. There wasn't a ton ton here, but there were some really nice pieces. I really like this. It was actually marked 1990 on the bottom, but I couldn't find the lid. So I actually ended up leaving that one behind, but I did come across this really cute little bat plush, maybe from like Oriental Trading back in the day. That was so cute. That one definitely went in my bag. I continued looking and I thought this thing was really interesting. At first I didn't know what it was, but I picked it up to get a better look and it's sort of like a vampire light with a light cord, really different. I moved over to some other boxes that were hiding underneath the staircase going to the upstairs of the house and saw another haunted house. Now this one's definitely newer than the other ones that I had come across prior. I could tell because this one is super shiny and glazed. So the ones that are from like the 80s or the 90s are going to, in most cases, have what's called a bisque finish or a bisque material where it's very matte, almost chalky. Um, and that's how you can sort of date the haunted houses that light up with a light cord. I saw this cute little ghost. I thought he was really cute. And he too has like that bisque finish. And that's how you can tell that it's a bit older. They did have a few um, Christmas villages. Christmas villages too, like these are bisque. They're a bit older. I don't know about newer Christmas villages. Like, do they make them super shiny now? I'm not sure. I went back to the Halloween boxes hoping to find more and I did. I moved some florals and found this really cute wax candle in the shape of a jack-o'-lantern. That's definitely from the 90s. I remember growing up and my mom had a few um, of those wax candles in the shapes of pumpkins and in the shapes of ghosts. There were also a good amount of Anna Lee dolls in the basement. I didn't grab any of them. I wasn't too sure what they would price me out at, but I do know that they're really collectible and can resell. I came across this really cool jack-o'-lantern, but quickly moved over to this ceramic ghost figure. I couldn't believe I found this. These are really collectible, really cool. I can't wait to show you guys because surprise, I did pick it up. Um, there was a small table of Christmas, nothing too amazing. There were some older ornaments, but I didn't end up picking any of them up. And I took one more look over into this corner that I hadn't looked at before. It seemed like a lot of different tablecloths and wreaths, but you never know what's hiding. I did look at the shelves and 
the only thing that I took off these shelves was that little ghost, or actually rather big ghost that you guys just saw. And hiding on this top shelf was some Easter. I put my flashlight on and took a look, but there wasn't too much, mainly like newer candy containers um, and things of that nature from the 90s. Um, some plush stuff, nothing that I picked up. I continued to move on and found this box with some Christmas in it. I was hopeful that there might be some older stuff at the bottom, so. I moved around some of the decorations. They were mainly like newer Santas um, and didn't really come across too much. I did see that there was like this really cute wooden Mrs. Claus on a rocking chair. And there was actually another Santa that was in the basement that sort of matched her, um, but they weren't in great condition. There were some marks on her hair. Uh, the Santa had his like hair falling out. So I didn't pick up any of those. I do know some of them are like made in Sweden, I think, um, and can be collectible. Even those little wooden music boxes like the one I just picked up, but that one was broken. So I left that behind. Unfortunately, there just wasn't too much here um, that was worth picking up, even though I was really hopeful I was gonna find something at the bottom. I didn't, and that's just the way it is sometimes. But I do really suggest if you go to an estate sale to always look through everything. You really never know what's going to be hidden at the bottom. So one of our top tips for going to estate sales is to look through everything. Um, we found some crazy stuff at the bottom of like brand new, um, you know, boxes of holiday or decorations. Um, it does happen. Like this little guy I spotted is an older little elf, probably from the 70s, but he was missing an eye. I did go into the kitchen and find this really cool Halloween mug. It's probably from like the 2000s. I loved it. I thought it was so fun. So I picked it up as I continued to go through the rest of the house. And I went into a bedroom right after this and spotted right on the bed a Garfield for Janine. It was only marked $8, but unfortunately, look guys, somebody had like drawn on the eyes. It was so weird. I don't know why they did that. Um, it was a 25 year anniversary plush. I didn't pick him up, but I was really tempted to. On this table, I did spot this really cute, I believe it's like German made, um, little thermometer, really cute. I made my way into the other bedrooms. This one had a really cool hanging lamp that I liked from the ceiling. And it also had a Santa doll. Janine actually has this one. I can't remember where she got it from, but $15 is pretty fair for him. He's probably from the seventies, early eighties. Um, and the way Christmas prices are nowadays, I would say $15 is pretty fair. I love the layout of this house. It was a beautiful house. It was really big and had like three or four bedrooms on the top floor. I made my way into the next one and started to look around. There was this really interesting doll in the bed and I still don't know what it is. I should have looked up when I was there and I still haven't looked it up, but it was like a little gnome marked 1976. I thought he was really interesting, but I didn't end up picking him up. There was a whole closet full of women's clothing and there were some really nice pieces. I don't know about you guys, let us know in the comments, but in our area, there are a lot of clothing resellers. So a lot of people who show up to the estate sales are just interested in clothes. Um, and a lot of them are into like band tees and t-shirts from, you know, the seventies and the eighties. Um, but typically what we find are things like this, just like women's clothing, men's clothing um, for the past like 30 years. But we do know that there are quite a lot of clothing resellers out there. There definitely wasn't a ton of stuff at this estate sale. It wasn't like the rooms were filled and filled, um, but it was still fun to look through what was there. Like this pile of, I believe it was like German maps. They must've traveled a lot to Germany because there was actually quite a lot of German uh, pieces and souvenirs around the house. Well, for you, Shannon, and my mom, so. Oh, you're a doll. Here you go, thank you. I'm gonna go put it by my mom. Okay. okay guys, we are out of there. That was quick, I was in and out. Um, as you can see, there wasn't really too much besides the holiday and the holiday was newer, but we love newer Halloween from like the 80s, 90s and 2000s. So um, I did get some stuff. I paid $25 and I'm going to show you guys. Luckily for me, it was a quick in and out. I got to head back home, start working, log in. But um, no, it was a good little trip and I'm excited to show you guys what I got and show Janine too. Okay, I just got back. I'm about to show Janine um, what I got. But did you guys feel that earthquake? Oh my God, we literally had an earthquake. Janine, did you feel it? It was wild. We're like really close to the epicenter. If you guys felt that earthquake in the uh, New York region, New Jersey region, comment below. It was wild. Right, Janine?
Yeah, something that's not very common around here. No, so that's our big news of the day, but let's head into the hall. Guys, I was in and out of that house and that estate sale, but I still managed to find some good things that Janine hasn't seen yet. So Janine's behind the camera. Hello. Hi, Janine. <laughs> and you're going to see her or hear her reactions um, as I show you guys what I got. The first thing I grabbed was this jack-o'-lantern. He was up on a shelf. I didn't really get to capture him on video, but I just thought he had a really cool face. I don't that's think... That's really cool. Yeah, Does it like light it? up? No. It has like a velvet bottom. I don't think he's too old mm -hmm. um, or vintage, but I really liked his face. It almost looks like it would light up. It's cool. It does. Yeah, mm -hmm. I almost thought it was like um, ceramic. Like it looks like a hobbyist piece almost. Right, I see that. But... Mm -hmm. No, I think it's a little bit more modern, and I think I mentioned it, but I paid $25. I only paid $8 for him. I thought he was really cool. I think Janine's going to be really excited about this one. I was really excited when I found it. I didn't film it too much because I was so excited, but I found Janine. Look, it's one wow. of the ceramic ghosts. That one's different, though. Yeah, he like has a hollow face. Somebody must have, or a kid must have put stickers in little, his face. Uh jack-o'-lantern face in there yeah so we'll remove those but he has like a that hole cool. which is different mm -hmm. and you could definitely put a light cord in him and i think there was a light cord in him um to light him up he mm -hmm. is really really cool we actually have one i think in the collection yeah but they were hobbyist piece so there you can find them in a ton of different ways however you know the person painted it um but this is like janine said the first time that i found one with like an open face how cool is that janine that is really cool and so like you could put a light in there and it would shine through the face, I guess. Yeah, definitely. It's that is really cool. cool. I've never seen one like that. This We're going to have to uh, light that up and see how that looks. Yeah, this was definitely like one of the best things um, that I found. That was really cool. Just some little things that I found. Um, I know I was looking at this in the sale and I actually just looked at the tag and it's actually from 1982, this little bat. Oh, wow. It's really cute. Yeah, so it's like, you know, 40 years old. Um, it's really cute. It has a little hook that you could hook it on. And then I also found um, the little wax candle and Love that. this little ceramic guy, which is really fun. Those are really cute. And how much did you pay for everything? I forgot what you said. $25 for everything. And there's still more. And there's more. I did pick up this really fun mug. I feel like it's hard to find mugs like this nowadays. Yeah. Unless you go to like a small boutique and there's like independent, you know, smaller artist mugs. You don't find this anymore as easily. Um, it does have a little chip right there, but I thought it would be like great for display purposes even. There's a lot you could stick in here, put on a shelf, or I guess you could drink from it still. There's no maker's mark, but this is definitely from like the 2000s if I were to guess. Um, That's what I think too. It's like three dimensional. It's a really cool piece. The last two things I picked up, Janine, I thought you'd be really excited to see. I found two haunted houses. Wow, those are cool, Laura. Aren't they great? Wow, wow, those we, are cool. We love these, we collect them. The uh, haunted houses from like the 80s and 90s. This one, I guess they put stickers on, the little foam stickers. Wow, it is so three dimensional. There's just like, there's so much, the more I look at it, the more I see. There's like ghosts coming out and a cat and a witch. Yeah, I see those stickers as well. <laughs> <laughs> I love the cat and the witch. That's really unique. Mm -hmm. um, and this one is really different too. This might have been a hobbyist piece and it is like slightly shiny, but I still think it's a bit That's older cool. from like the 90s maybe or early 2000s. Somebody might have painted it. Mm -hmm. They're both so fun. Um, they both came with questionable light cords. Wow. So I tossed those because they were like falling apart. But these are really great. And you know, these are so fun to find. And something that I like about these two and finding them at estate sales is that they don't have like a huge like value. Usually like the people at the estate sale companies don't put a big like price ticket on these typically. So still able to find something that's like vintage Halloween for a couple of bucks, which is always a win in my book. Um, yeah, so these are great. These and the ghost are such a fantastic find. I was yeah. really excited to find them. And that's about it. It wraps up what I got at that estate sale. How do you think I did, Janine? I think you did fantastic. $25 yeah. was a great deal on everything. You. And you know what? It just what? has me itching for Halloween. And before you know it, the thrift stores are going to have it out. Crazy. And actually, the 14th is 200 days till Halloween. And to celebrate, we're having a whatnot sale. Yeah. So if you're interested, check out the link in the description. Thank you guys so much for joining us. See you next time. Bye. Bye.